These conventional heat storages are very expensive, but these European storages are several dozen times cheaper. This storage will be filled with 10,000 cubic meters of water, but the volume of such storage can be only a few tens of cubic meters or several cubic meters of water. The largest storage in the world has a volume of 203,000 cubic meters of water, and it works with this large solar station with 70,000 square meters of solar collectors. These collectors heat the storage water to 90 degrees Celsius in summer, and this heat is stored until winter, when it will be directed to the district heating system of the Danish town of Vogens. We can see that these heat storages are an artificial lake which is covered with thick thermal insulation, but their bottom does not have a special insulation. Speaking otherwise, thermal insulation of their bottom is ground. There are some results of my mathematical modeling of heat transfer from summer to winter by small storages with a volume of more than 100 cubic meters, and we can see that the smaller the storage, the greater the share of useful heat which is lost due to heat losses from the storage. Perhaps I will someday make a separate video on this mathematical modeling which gave some interesting results including a radical reduction of these heat losses in winter. In addition, I made this experimental similarity of the heat storages. The purpose of this experiment was to find weak spots of polymer recliners of the storage, and the last minute of this video will show the results of this experiment. The technology of building these storages consists of the following four steps, and the first two steps are very similar to the technology of building large artificial reservoirs. We can see that the step one is to dig a large pit, and sometimes the cost of step one will not be expensive if land relief is suitable. For example, the large storage of Vogens was built on an old sand quarry. And we can see that the shape of the pit can be different. These texts describe the influence of the distance to groundwater and the influence of the type of soil. Then the bottom and walls of the storage are covered by a polymer liner, but the high temperature of the water storage radically accelerates aging of the polymers, and therefore some types of liners are not recommended for these storages. The large Danish storages use some brands of liners of high-density polyethylene with a thickness of 2 or 3 mm, and their liners will work more than 20 years, but the Danes limit the water temperature to 80 or 90 degrees Celsius. In addition, liners of several brands of rubber or polypropylene can also be used. Obviously, the cost of a liner depends on the operating temperature of the storage and on the period before planned replacement of the liner and this period can be less for countries with cheap labor or for small storages. This step is to pour water into this pit. But before this, the Danes have installed water inlet and outlet arrangements. A large storage usually requires quality water, and this text describes these requirements for the storage in the Danish town of Droinglund. First a large storage is covered with polymer liner. This liner will also degrade due to the high water temperature, and therefore the Danes use some brands of liner of high-density polyethylene. They predict that the life of their liners will be more than 20 years. We can see that workers can walk on this liner, but this is not necessary in the case of a small storage because the thermal insulation can be installed without walking on the storage. Then the thermal insulation is covered by the final polymer liner which protects against solar radiation, wind, rain and snow. But a large storage has a more complex structure, and the Danes put these nets over the thermal insulation and under it. In addition, the Danes install vents to remove moisture from the thermal insulation, and they install pumps to remove rainwater. And we can see these pipes which press the liners and give the necessary shape to the cover. But the new storages in Granmoor Vogens have different cover structure, and this is information on the cost of these storages. This is my estimate of the construction costs of the storage which was built in 2014 in the Danish town of Vogens. And this is my estimate of an analogous storage in some countries with cheap labor, for example, in my Ukraine or India, and we can see that the construction costs of the storage decreases several times. And this happens not only because of lower salaries, 
but also because the polymer liners and the thermal insulation can be cheaper due to the fact that Economic Sense recommends reducing the period of their planned replacements to about 10 years in countries with cheap labor. At the same time, these periods should be 20 or 30 years in Denmark and in other countries with expensive labor and cheap capital. This is information about heat losses from some storages in Denmark. And the description of this video has a link to document from the International Energy Agency. This document gives a lot of interesting information on these Danish storages and how to build them. It is very important for those who decided to build such large or small storage. This is my heat storage for almost 4 tons of water, and first I installed two liners of poor quality low density polyethylene with a thickness of about 100 microns. Then I poured the water and put the third liner on it. Then this storage was operated with this solar station which heated this storage up to 70, 80 and 100 degrees Celsius, and this heat was used for space heating of this house, but in summer this heat was directed to water heating of this swimming pool. And it turned out that this third liner degraded after three months of the operation, but now I'm putting floats of old expanded polystyrene between the water and the liner and therefore its lifespan is several years now. Then this second liner degraded at the junction of water and air, and this happened at the 6th or 8th month of the operation. Then I removed the water and saw that the second liner was in good condition under the water, but the first liner degraded. I think that this first liner protected the second liner against contact with air which destroys polyethylene in combination with a high temperature of more than 70 degrees Celsius. But the first liner had contact with the air and therefore it degraded. This result indicates the possible sense of installing an additional polymer liner here, and perhaps this liner does not have to be absolutely sealed, and its parts are laid without welding. This liner may be very thin and inexpensive but it should be a heat-resistant polymer which will protect this polyethylene liner against contact with oxygen which goes from the soil. And I remind that my experiment showed a weak spot here, at the junction of air and water, but perhaps this was due to the fact that my first liner did not protect the second liner against contact with oxygen. But if it is not so, then perhaps this part of the polyethylene liner should be collected from thicker and more qualitative pieces of a liner or it should be closed against soil oxygen. This is my showing of remains of cheap polypropylene fabric which was installed under my first liner, and we can see that the high temperature destroyed it during one year. That's why I think that this geotextile might be a bad idea.